This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. You, you, the way you're sitting in that chair with the slight tan and the slick back hair, you look like a, you're a mobster that took over the Star Trek Enterprise and you're in Captain Kirk's fucking seat now. Like you hijacked it, like, like the way the mob would hijack a rig and steal the cigarettes in the back. <laughs> I swear. What's up? You look good, bro. You look summery, a little... No. Uh-oh. All right. Look at the, look at the eyes. Not good. The... <laughs> The uh, look is not indicative of how I'm feeling inside right now. All right, oh, I'm coming in yeah. hot. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, that's an expression, by the way. All right, uh, <laughs> for the merch, <sighs> merch, merch store, coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to keep notes. I don't know what. Cancer fist does during the fucking show, but I'm the only one who's grabbing a pen around here. <laughs> That's a guy who works with Patrick, by the way, folks. All right, what's up, bro? Uh, not the sun, you know. Just it's the morning, uh, the the no morning routine over here, and you know, you having one kid, that kid being a daughter, it's totally different. Totally. When you throw when you throw uh, another kid in the mix who's who's a boy and who's got an attitude, <sighs> we go through this every morning with the with the changing out of clothes. Right, I'm I'm ready to put him in the clothes I want him to wear for his pajamas yeah. at night. So I'm ready to get him ready for the day in the clothes that he's gonna wear. At night when he goes to sleep. <laughs> right? You, you prefer him to sleep in his school outfit. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. are you even involved in this? I don't understand why like that's what is I'm this territory. No, that's, uh, I, I, we gotta figure out the territories here. Okay? Yeah. Real quick. Because the responsibilities seem to be blurred. <laughs> and uh I don't know. I don't know like where I fall. In the father responsibility of it all, right? right? Like, yeah, I don't know if other fathers are doing this and then doing a podcast. Like, I had snot all over my uh, shoulder just now in the outfit I was going to wear, but then I was told to change him, like, kind of in the midst of coming uh, up here. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like, I should, like, we, what we are you start, doing? What are you doing? Are you doing this shit? I don't know. You, you saw what I'm doing. I was hitting a glass pipe a half a foot long. That's what I'm doing. My kid's in school. She's 10. And they're going strawberry picking straight from school. Her and my, my wife. So they're not going to be here for a while. I'm just saying, you know, Stern are wasn't you, changing hey, hold on, hold on, diapers wait. 20 minutes. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, are you are you required to go strawberry picking? Like, is that something like Jackie goes, hey, you want to come? Well, and you go... Nah, I'm good. And then she goes, "Really? You don't want like, to? What? What? what nah, where is it? Man. You're right. You're right, guy. It's about 20 minutes away. I'm a total family man. We were gonna go Sunday, and uh, my daughter and, and uh, Jackie were both like, "You gonna come?" I was like, "Yeah, I'll come. I'll come. <clears throat> I'll go with the back." I go, "How do strawberries grow? I don't remember. The bush." And Jackie's like, "No, you got to bend down." I'm like, "All right, I ain't picking, but I'm hanging. I'm walking around. I'll eyeball them with you." And they were like, "Oh, that's awesome. Thanks for coming." We get there, close for the day. The lady has no sign or anything. Like we, we no call. You can't call. So we found out she's open today. Sadie's got a half a day. So Jackie's like, "We'll go without you. Do the cast." I made the effort once. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, no, I'm down with it. Picking the strawberries, it's it's a it's a nice time. But like, what I'm saying is, the kid's not going to come downstairs from his bedroom naked. So like, why are you getting so involved at such a young age? Don't you not like step in till it's like time for him to start maybe wearing a tie for his first dance? Like, what are we talking here? First grade, he's going into next year, and you're already uh, getting involved with the outfits. Uh, I don't outside of sports, I don't understand what's going on. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, where's, where's Lana? Is she telling you to get out of the room and I got this? Like, what's... what's? No, let's go, you know, could you get him changed? It's like, I, uh -huh. there's no time. There's, and he don't no want to wear what you give him? No, no, it's not that. It's it's a struggle. Like, 
Okay, we gotta get we gotta get you into your outfit. Ow! <laughs> then the problem is, this is what used to happen with Sadie, and it's got to be ten times more with a boy. The problem is for him to get the message, you got to yell, and because he's a boy, you have to come hard and heavy for him to get the message. Don't and then, work. Doesn't that upset? It no. Don't even upset him. Doesn't even phase well, him. Yeah, no. I get loud. Turn he up. gets loud, but. Turn the mics off for a second. You got it. You got to hit him. What? You got to hit him. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only language a little boy understands, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Did you ever? Did I ever get slapped? I, yeah. I, I, you know, I still remember it to this day. It was so traumatizing for me. <laughs> That's and, and my mom and my mom denies this, but I got a slap to the mouth from the back of her hand once. Just a just a quick ting. Uh, it, it stunned uh, me yeah. so much where I'm like, <laughs> oh wow. I ain't doing that again. Right? It it, it literally <laughs> snapped me right in this place. Now <laughs> Listen, hey, made you moments? the man you are today. That smack made you the man you are today, bro. <laughs> I still remember it, bro. That's what I'm saying. You live by it. I live <gasps> by it. Now, there's been, man. Moment, there's been moments where he's crying and he's looking right at me and he's screaming, you know, with this, with this, no, no. There's been times where I think a hit might be appropriate. But, you know, not, not, not a hit that's going to, like, it's just something that's just changes the whole thing right but, the dynamic like your yeah. mom didn't hurt you she it was it was i would say more stunned right that's what i'm saying but, the, but this is they, they, it's not like i'm gonna hit him and he's gonna stop crying right no 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 why not <laughs> he's already crying and I give him a slap, he's going to go, what the? And he's going to cry more. But what is he cry? He's crying now just for like, a, like for no reason. He's not in pain. He's like, yeah. just, you know. Well, what if he's gonna... in pain? What if, what if the hit causes a little, hey, it's stung. Mm -hmm. We're crying. We're crying double now. I, I'm just trying to think in terms of when a kid is making noise, like let's say during the World War II, and and you're trying to hide, and the Nazis are coming, and and, and I don't care that you cry. You gotta shut the fuck up right now, right? So you smack them, and they get quiet, right? Like I I disagree. I don't think you. I think your kid's gonna be stunned, and he's gonna go. This baby thing ain't flying anymore. My dad wants me to be silent, mm -mm. right? Yeah. You know, am I, I being strict it, here? I don't know. I, I got. I'm just saying, bro. You gotta lay the roost down now, man, or this kid's gonna be a wild child driving around the hills of LA in a Ferrari, not even answering your cell phone calls, bro. You gotta, you gotta put your foot down now. I'm serious. This is see it. But you know, this have, is where my head hanging goes. Hanging out with uh, Willow. <laughs> Willow Smith, right? Those kids. Those. Are, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Guys, let me clue you in on a bed that you gotta get on, in on. It's called Ghost Bed Mattress. For over 20 years, Ghost Bed has been crafting the perfect sleep experience. Their mattresses are built with signature patented cooling materials. That's huge, man. A lot of women like my wife, you get the hot flashes, they got cooling materials built in, making them the coolest beds in the world. No more sweaty nights, my friends. Ghost Bed never cuts corners. Their mattresses are made to last. Just like a good timeless punchline is made to last. You know what I'm saying? And here's the real kicker. Ghost Bed offers a 101 night sleep tra trial, free shipping, and lightning fast delivery. That's 101 nights free trial. Not 100, 101 free nights. Most orders ship within 24 hours so you can start sleeping better in no time with the range of firmness options, all right? Because we all know we don't like to sleep on the same level of softness or well, firm this ghost bed ensures you find the perfect support for your body. They have a team, not a guy, not a lady, a team of sleep experts standing by to help you. So head to ghostbed.com slash the cast today to get started for a limited time. You use the code, the cast for 40% off your purchase site wide head to ghostbed.com slash the cast to get started. One more time, baby ghostbed.com. 
Facebook.com slash the cast and get started sleeping better. <laughs> Do you want to yeah. meet one of them LA boys? I just I just want the kid where like what I'm envisioning for him and where where this is going is two different places. You know, like right now I feel there's a lot of confrontation. Right? Like before you have kids, I think you envision like, oh, okay, my son is gonna be da da da. Right? He's gonna be, you know. Right. The, uh, the discipline, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You know, yeah, yeah. Say, you know, say hi to say hi to everybody, and you don't say hi, right? He goes behind mommy's leg. He's shy, and 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 there's a part of me that wants to go get the fuck out here and start shaking hands. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Am I expecting too much? And then Lana's like. You know, I talk to all the moms. They say every kid is like at four. Yeah. This is the way they are. And I want to say no, right. they're not. And all the moms you're talking to ain't doing it right. <laughs> right? It's a, but it's, bro, it's, it's a little of both because like just, just this morning with Sadie, I said something to her. We're in the kitchen and she goes, uh, uh, I forget what it was, but the answer was something about hot. And she looks at me and she goes, hot? Like that, and the way she said it, Jackie already gets on her about it. It's already that little teenager, like, I'm already like, oh my God, you're gonna be, in my head, I'm like, you're gonna be a dick? I thought you were gonna be cool. I thought I thought we were gonna have that, you were not gonna, you're doing what they all do. Yeah. yeah. And, I tr and I try so hard, right? So. <laughs> yeah, that's what I I'm saying. Know. It's like, you think your daughter or your son is gonna be not the norm, and, and, at least around us, you know, whatever they're doing, like at school, we don't get any any of this shit on the report card. He just got his report card, right? Right. None of this. Like here, yesterday, I told us, oh no, excuse me, what is Doctor Cohen doing with this fucking rug on his side? Uh, anyway, listen, uh, uh, <laughs> that's another thing. You know what I think he's doing? He's leaning back on the chair. This ain't school. You know what I'm saying? I, and this, yeah. <laughs> I'm all over the map, bro. All I'm, I'm saying, see all I'm saying <laughs> is things got to change over here, right? Rapidly, right? Because right. yeah. So you bring up a I'm, good point, though, man. The whole we all say it. Our kids misbehave, my daughter, but you know, when they're home, they're not the way you want them to be. But you find out at school and around other people, they're super polite. And the idea is like, are you so exhausted from being polite that you got nothing left in the tank when you come home to the family? And then people, parents go, at least they're nice when they're out. And that's the important thing. No, I, I don't. It's, it's not cool to come home and then be an asshole. Like, keep, keep it going all the time. <laughs> this is what I attribute it to. Yeah. Okay, and this is the problem with going strawberry picking and doing <laughs> all this shit. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It used to be the dad was was not participating in all of family activities. He he'd pop in every now and again. Yeah. So you never really saw happy dad, right? Never really right. saw a happy dad. You saw tired. Don't want to be bothered, dad. Right? So so there was a, a hint of like fear. Because I remember my mom used to say, wait till daddy gets home. Of now, course. Yeah. Now, I never really saw dad at the strawberry fields. Picking strawberries, right? right and putting right. them in a basket and laughing, right? right Never really right. saw kind of that side. So, a little pumpkin picking on a Sunday, maybe with dad. Maybe. What? No. Pump pumpkin picking. We right before we Halloween, as many oh, as dad we could carry. Bro, where'd you grow up? On a farm? No. We went to the Long grocery Island, store, yeah. picked up a couple of pumpkins, and brought them home. <laughs> what the fuck? Pumpkin picking. Schomburg weather. You can't grow any <laughs> produce out that way. <laughs> All I'm saying is the father back in the day yeah. had more of a, a leverage with his kids 
because when he walked in, it was like, oh, man, we don't know what we're going to get here. Right. Because because they only kind of saw one side. I'm not saying, you know, I'm exaggerating. I'm no, what you like that happy. I'm just saying it was always wait till your father comes home. And I didn't really know dad to be strawberry picking. If I saw my dad picking strawberries and putting it in a basket as a kid, I go, look at this weak fuck. Right. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> you know, like we can do anything I, now. <laughs> this guy's picking strawberries. I, I come home at three o'clock in the morning. Well, that's that's also how <laughs> that's fucking right, right? Oh, you're gonna you're gonna tell me what to do. You were holding the basket for me two days ago while I was dropping the good ones in. Holy shit! That's the same thing when I go to my get my uh, kid for uh, school. If I ever saw my dad walking in his suit down my fucking elementary school hallway, I'd be like, "What the hell is this guy doing here? You don't come to this world," you know. So, yeah, but to your point, bro, growing up, I was either having a great time with my dad or I was staying away because I was scared and he wasn't in a great mood. There was no in between. You know, he didn't no. just he wasn't just in the same room as me casually ever. We were either <laughs> having a ball or I was trying to get the fuck away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. I think that, that there has to be those extremes there. It can't be a gray area where dad is just, you know. <sighs> Listen, I, I know we're in a different environment. I'm, uh, uh, the society has changed. Of course, and absolutely. Dad, dads are more involved. I get it. I'm just saying. But there has to be a little bit of like uh, when daddy walks in the room, things yeah. need to stop. You know, that that's at least the way I was. When my dad walked in the room, I was like, oh, shit. I I, there was a fear there that's not there it's anymore. It, it, bro. We are two generations away from daddy's not even going to pee standing up anymore. Because <laughs> mommies can't, so nobody will. I swear to God, bro, that's going to fucking happen. I remember my mom used to have to pick up my dad at the train station because we only had one car. By the way, I don't know when that stopped, too. Everyone's got a car. We had one car. <laughs> Who's got the car, right? So and my dad would he's exhausted from working in the city, hour and twenty minute train ride home, and they're sitting in the in the driveway, and my mom is talking to him, and me and my brother looking out the window, go, bitch is telling him everything. Look at her, look, and he's so tired, he's just sitting there, and he's like in his head, he's like, who do I gotta hit? Just tell me who I gotta hit. I'll go in there, I'll hit him, and then we'll eat some dinner. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? <laughs> And then 20 minutes after the hit, he comes in. He's like, hey, I was practiced today. Like, the hit never happened. You know what I'm saying? We're done with that. You didn't, you didn't hold on to that till, like, uh, Wednesday. Yeah, that's it. I just rewatched Saturday Night Fever. It was beautiful. He's dad smacking him in the head. What's the hair? He always with the hair. And then two minutes later, he said to his dad, let's see, what are we doing this weekend? You know, like, <laughs> you know how it is, bro. I'm Shit. telling you, man. If you want to pause the show, go hit the kid and come back. I'll wait. We <laughs> 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 oh, oh, lose sponsors talking about this, bro. <laughs> oh God, no. So yeah, that's that's yeah. That's, that's what I'm coming in with. But good. I'm man. glad we hashed this out, man. If it wasn't for the cast, I'd be I literally I'd have my head through a piece of drywall uh, right now. I, no. <laughs> um, I don't even I can't imagine what it's like raising a boy, man. They are just all over the place. It's it's the energy <sighs> level they got. It it, it it's well, too yeah. much energy they got. And then I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm you know, gonna be fifty years old and I got no energy, right? I'm trying to figure out where uh, the hell the energy just dips off. Like, oh, yeah. like this kid, I had him running the other day, back and forth. He's in camp and this and that and the other thing. He went to go take a bath. And I told my wife, uh, if he comes out of there, if like, he, if he comes out of the bath, like running around, we got yeah. no hope. Like, <laughs> you, you, you just, like, when do they go, I'm tired, I want to go to bed? Right. I don't know, but you know, I, I I hear you about the running around and this and that. But is it is it as much? Is it as much we can't run around, or is it also a little bit like you get older and you go, the fuck am I running around for? You know, <laughs> where am I going? You know what I mean? Like you, you, they're so. 
I don't want to say dumb, but they're so unknowledgeable. Even even at 22, I didn't know shit, bro. It just takes so long as a man to figure shit out. And when you do, yeah, right? You know, like, but don't you want a boy like that who's just yelling and screaming instead of that boy in the corner just already on the thing? And, oh God, here we go. God, he's gonna be living at home till he's 40. <laughs> right. No, no. I like the enthusiasm. I like I like the energy. I'm just saying, you know, like even going to bed, it, 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 it's a, like Ron and I were talking. Uh, when we put them to bed. We got to start like an hour before the bedtime to get them down. It's like man. you know, trying. It's trying to get like a horse in the corral for the Kentucky Derby. You know, like you know, so, sometimes they don't want to go in. Right. That's like what it is at bedtime. It's like. <laughs> It's it's like still at six thirty we're bouncing off the walls, like my daughter was doing a, a full play for me in her bedroom yesterday before bedtime. She's doing a, like a whole play, right? And right. and I don't know if you've ever felt this. Like I'm sitting in bed, I go, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Let's pretend I came with a bunch of people to see you perform, and I'm gonna be talking to the people while you're backstage setting up. So she's backstage, whatever backstage, she's on the side. And I'm going, oh my God, you know, I'm going like Serafina. I heard she's amazing in this play. <laughs> I love it. So <laughs> she comes. In your head, you're like, bro, I'm fucking crushing it with my improv right now. This is unbelievable. Doing the turnaround to the people behind you. I love it, bro. Who does that? <laughs> so I'm doing this whole thing. She comes out and she starts singing, you know, she starts belting it out. And I'm like, God, she's like, you know, and, and I'm like whispering as she's singing to the people, right? So then uh, she goes, "Okay, Daddy, okay, I'm gonna do, a, you know, I'm, you know, I'm gonna do it again, another scene." I said, "Okay." So she goes back another scene. So, you know, three, four scenes, right? You ever, you ever have it where like the play's getting like, okay, we're like, this is, we're done. Like, yeah, I'm done. Absolutely, I'm done. <laughs> right? Yeah, but she ain't yeah. done. Right? Yeah. Right, right. So I get to the fifth scene, right? Now I yeah. started, I was up in the bed. Now I'm laying down watching this, right? And I fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so she runs in the Caruso's room where mommy is and she's like crying. I was doing the play and daddy fell asleep. And listen, I want to say, I want to say, did you see the six other scenes I was doing? You know, like, you, you're, right, you're right. concentrating on the sleep. I was doing magic yeah. for the <laughs> last six scenes. I can't, bro. No. You're in such a deep sleep. You can't even <laughs> sense that your daughter left the room crying. I mean, by the way. The daughter should lean over and give you a nudge. You're like, you know, you know, you go straight to mom. You're killing me, man. Right. So, but that's a heavy sleep, bro. I mean, I've, I've kind of dozed <laughs> off. And let you come in. I mean, like, did Lana have to come in and be like, dude? <laughs> no, no, I woke up, you know, like, it was one of those, like, I was out. I was out. And then, and then she just walked out of the room. She wasn't crying as she walked out of the room. And, you know, yeah. I didn't even know she walked out of the room. Lana told me this. I think she walked out of the room and came back and started to play up again. And I didn't think there was, uh, I didn't even think she left. I didn't, I didn't know she left. Right, right. But uh, I don't know, man. I just, I, I have a certain tolerance and patience for, for stuff. And yeah, no, I, 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 you know, yeah. I, I want to do stuff, but I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out responsibility wise where does mine end where does lana's begin where does hers end where does my i know it's a team effort we're co-parenting here and not to yeah. say that someone has a job when it comes to parenting but you know hey if i'm working i'm doing the cast there's got to be a little you know we got a you know a little give and take here no it's, you, you, you try you try to balance it out it's with, with two it's you know, you were sitting here talking about the boy and, and we didn't even mention like as great as the little girls are like my daughter sometimes will like not want to go to bed and she gets up. So I can't imagine dealing with that and then having a boy running around on top of that. It's like, 
Hands must be full, dude. Absolutely. Hey, and listen, I'm just saying, I got two kids. There are people out there got seven kids, right? Seven, eight kids. Uh, I don't know how the hell they're doing it. Uh, That's got to be a whole. Can you imagine putting seven kids down for bed? <laughs> the hell, how do you even I do that? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, bro. It really starts to. By the seventh kid, I'm like, what? Wait, Kev, Bill? You got? I don't even remember your name. You got to wear a name tag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shit. I wouldn't even try to introduce one, but these are my kids. Introduce oh. yourselves. <laughs> All right, guys. Now that we're in the thick of the summer, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals to support sunny, active days, right? You don't want to be cooking all on your own. That's why Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with flavorful, nutritious, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Boom. You'll save time. You'll eat well, and you'll stay on track reaching your goals. You're too busy with summer plans. I get it. We all are. Who's got time to cook? But you want to make sure you're eating well. It's very important. We've been discussing it on the cast. With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping and the prepping and the cleaning up too while still getting the flavor and the nutritional quality you need. Factor is fresh, never frozen. That's key. Never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy, then go back to outside and soak up the warm weather. Boom, beautiful. With Factor, you can rest assured you're making a sustainable choice. At Factor, they offset 100% of their, their delivery emissions. They source 100% renewable electricity for their production sites and offices and feature sustainably sourced seafood in all their meals. This July, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door, ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash thecast50 and use the code thecast50 to get 50% off. That's the code thecast50 at factormeals.com slash thecast50 to get 50% off. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, yeah. I right. try to improv. I, 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 but I just want to say with the kid thing, I've done yeah. this where like I'm playing with my daughter and then like your point, it gets to be too long and you'll do... Especially when she was younger, but like, all right, we're done. We got to, if the show's over now, blah, blah, blah. And then when I had to take no, right, for an answer, and it gets to a point where finally I got to yell. I'm like, we said no. And then she cried. And I'm like, we just had this beautiful moment. And now you got to ruin it and make me look like a bad guy. Cause I mean, my knees are buckling, man. I can't sit here any longer. <laughs> do you ever wonder though? Do you ever wonder though if you were a 35 year old dad, if you'd have fallen asleep after the fifth song? Do you ever wonder? If I was a 35-year-old dad, my kids would be telling me, okay, dad, we don't want to do another scene. We want to go to bed. Like, if I was 35, right. I would tire them out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I would be like, come on, guys, do another scene. And they'd be like, I want to go to bed, man. You get out of my room? <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, you pack out 15 years, and I'm sleeping with mouth open in the bed while she's doing a scene. But the difference also is, bro, you'd have more energy, but I'd be doing the scene at 35, half with them and half of my head going, where am I going with my career? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I suck. This is crazy. I got nothing going on. Yeah, no, daddy's the doll now. Okay. Oh, God. What am I doing? <laughs> that's where I was at 35. Holy shit. 35 in a, in a studio apartment doing it. <laughs> 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 oh, Lana God. in the other room looking up ex boyfriends on Facebook. Oh, what the fuck did I do? Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> he, he said he says that after the date and funny bone, he's gonna do a he's gonna do a theater. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I want to get into uh, what you got yeah. going on over there. What, what you what you if you could share? I don't know. I can. I brought it up to share, dude. I asked Patrick about it. Let me start with the box, okay? I got these three boxes in one big box the other day. They're called, the company is called, I just want to make sure I say it exactly right, the thefreezepipe.com, right? So I said to Patrick, yo, I got this stuff. Is this from a, it was no note. Is it from a fan or is it someone? He goes, no, it's going to be a sponsor and they wanted to get the stuff to you ahead of time. They don't have any copy yet, but they just don't might you want it. You might want to see it. Check it out, dude. I don't normally come on like Tommy Chung and do stuff about weed products or anything like that. But this is a game 
changer. We're going to get one sent to whatever address you're comfortable with. They sent me three. It's a glass pipe. This is the small version. I'm sorry. It's a little not as pristine and clean as it um, normally would appear because I've been using it. But you see these coil. You see these coils. Yeah. There's these co coils. Okay. This whole thing you put in the freezer, and these coils they all freeze. This whole thing gets glass. Like if you put a frosty beer mug in, the whole thing gets cold. And and then you got the thing here that you put your your weed in, and it's a pipe. Okay. You hit this thing. By the time the smoke goes through them coils and hits your throat, it's like 300 degrees cooler, bro. It's so smooth. You blow out a cloud that you didn't even know was in you. It's so unbelievable. It's like it's like taking a $10 bottle of wine and putting it through a glass that makes it taste like a $175 bottle of wine by the time it hits your lips. It's unbelievable. And this is the small version. They sent me three. I didn't want to bring them from downstairs. The next one is a mini-sized bong. And this whole part, the middle part with the cylinders, comes out of the bong, so you only have to put the cylinders in the freezer. And then when you want to use it, you put it back in the bong. And then they gave me a big, tall glass one. These bongs are literally works of art. They are so beautiful. I'm not getting paid for this or nothing. I'm just saying this out of passion. I showed it to my one buddy, and I go, dude, I got to get you one of these. And the wife goes, we're not college. I'm not going to use a bong. And he goes... Kara, what you, this is a work of art. I go, bro, that's exactly what I said. It's a work of art. And by the way, you don't think you're going to use it until you put that thing in and freeze the smoke? It's so smooth. I tell you, you got to get one of these. You have a party. It's going to be a hit, bro. It's You're going to love it. It's beautiful. Well, I would, I would look at you as a, if you're looking in the wine world, almost a, a sommelier of weed, right? I I really am. I mean, I'm a, okay. probably more snow so than than Snoop Dogg, honestly. Okay. So so you know you know the product, you know the methods of how to use. Upon hearing this, just from a non weed guy, yeah, I would I would look at this and go, sounds like a gimmick, and like free. Freeze the way and then, and then. But what you're right. saying to me is, normally when you smoke weed, at least when I do, because I'm not used to it, it's like a burning, like a sometimes like I, it's burn, it burns, right? Yeah. What's a, you always think of when you see someone do a bong hit in a movie or anything? It's always followed. With <laughs> yeah. 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 You know. You're telling me this reduces the burn feeling, takes it away, takes it away. Completely, yeah. I mean, it, especially if you don't do so. I listen the bongs. I haven't tried yet, but of course, you also don't want to come in and try and take the biggest hit you can. But these pipes, uh, it makes it so smooth. And like I said, you blow it out, you don't even realize how much you had in you. So you're taking two or three hits, and you feel great. That's what people got to understand. It's always been about weed. You know, oh, it's an illegal drug. You do a couple hits, and then you sit down at night with a cup of coffee, and you just just have a wonderful time and then you go to bed like a normal human being and wake up feeling great it's like you know it's like a glass of wine even less invasive on your body i would say i don't know about that they say red wine's great for you. but the point is you know i really i i do i do promote this and the last thing i want to say is it takes only about an hour to get that thing frozen it lasts for about two hours before it's like not cold again and then you just throw it back in the freezer, even in between hits, throw it back in the freezer like you would, uh, you know, a bottle of white wine and then just take it out of the freezer and put it. You know, freezepipe.com. If you know anyone who smokes and you want to get them something special, I am not kidding you, man. This is a gift they would enjoy. I think I'm going to start smoking pot. Bro, it's going to be good for your body. I'm telling you. The only down, the only problem I will say about this pipe, and this is a problem to have, I guess. Jackie and I like to sit out on the front porch at night when Sadie goes to bed, especially in the warm weather. And you know, you got this thing. There was a couple walking their dog across the street, and I'm going, Jack, hurry up! It's wild, it's cold. And she goes, Guy, I'm not pulling out the fucking foot long glass pipe while our neighbor's walking by. So, so you got. Someone's got to do a lookout for you before you. 
you hit on this Indian peace pipe. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel I feel like that's not really a a public pipe. I feel like that's in the backyard, no one looking. I feel like if you you can't whip that out right. and other people see it. No, but you're right. But with friends at a party in your privacy, your backyard, it's very communal. You know what I'm saying? It's quite the opposite. It's like beyond smoking a joint. We're all hitting off of the uh, glass. You know, this is glycerine, by the way, in the middle. Uh, uh, that's what they say. So, well, and, let me uh, ask you. By the way, me... I, I, I don't know my weed. Like, I just smoke it a lot. And I know what gets me high and what doesn't. I'm really not a connoisseur with like seeds and growing it or anything. Yeah, no, I, 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 I know you're not that into it that, in that way, but I feel like yeah. you're into it in, in a way where I feel like you're like, uh, I think pot has like a connotation of like, just, it's yeah, just, uh, you know, like, yeah. you know, like, let's, let's like, eat food. It, it, yeah, but I feel like you're just a guy that uses it Almost like as you were sipping a nice Barolo. Thank you, bro. Night, That's how I like right? to feel. Yeah. Okay. My question is, and I want to get pot etiquette here. I'm having a birthday party, right? Yeah. I'm going to have about, I don't know, 30 people there, right? Man, I wish I could make that. Now, this, I'm kind of, I got I to gotta admit, we were talking about this last night, Lana and I. The party's on the 8th. You're coming yeah. on what? The tenth? Yeah. Oh, Sadie's got a recital in Buffalo. Oh, this this okay. yeah. So it was like a family right. thing. You know, this is like, but it's every weekend, man. It's crazy, right? Yeah, well, then we'll get into that. Now eh, there's gonna be wine there, food. If I brought out pot after dinner. How do you even introduce, like, there's going to be, like, a people hanging out in couches and whatnot. How do right. you introduce weed to a party? Because I know how to do it with, with alcohol. Hey, anybody want to drink? You want you know, scotch? You want some wine after dinner drink? Right, right. Pot? Right. How, do you, how do you, or do you yeah, bring like it out? Let's say, do I, let's say I had that pipe and yeah. I brought it out. And I just turn to you know my sister and go, "You want some? Is is that appropriate? Or how no, do you introduce like, weed to a party? I don't understand." That. I I feel the pipe is is only like of course your sister's presence, but like five or six close friends and family. I don't think you know you're starting to get an LA party, thirty people. You don't want to get Hep C off this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> just made myself laugh. Not that anyone, of course, of your party, but I'm just joking. I think. What you would do, what I think would be classy is um, pre-rolls by the booze in like a little glass jar and, you know, maybe a, a, some books and matches there, maybe some ashtrays specifically located, made clear that, you know, it's not that anyone smokes cigarettes anymore anyway. Uh, and, and like, you know, just make it kind of clear, like grab a dube for yourself, man. Um, and it's not like. No one's sharing. You take, like, if you and your wife are yeah. at a party, you take a dube and you go for a little walk over in the corner if you want, smoke your dube, or sit on the couch and smoke the dube together. Oh, God, it sounds classy. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to figure that out. It, I feel like if pot is presented in a way like almost a cigar, like a cigar you bring out in a humidor, and you go, oh, yeah, I'll tell you that, and then you cut it, you know, there's like a ritual of it with a cigar, and you're sitting there with a cigar. If you present pot in in a way where it's kind of elevated, like you know what I don't like, and I don't know if you know, like you know the white, you know the white paper rolls, like a joint. Yeah. Do they have joints that are a little, little bit more like classier in, in appearance? Like, do they have like a black, like like a black joint rolled up in like a black paper right. i feel like that would be like and like yeah. presented almost on like a a suede white almost like tray 
No, hey, the tray is nice. The papers, I'm sure you could get lots of different kinds of rolling papers. I mean, I've mostly seen white or uh, light brown, but I'm sure you probably could. And then, you know, there's two basic kinds. There's like a sativa and an indica. And like the indica, the way they remember it is in the couch. When you smoke an indica, it kind of makes you, it's supposed to give you a full body feel. You kind of like sink, sink into your couch. Not very uh, party-esque. The sativa is called the head high that makes you go like, dude, can you imagine? Like, you know, like, fun. <laughs> so you can even say we got some sativas here. And what's very popular is a hybrid, a little both. So, you know, you could be like, we got the hybrids, da, da, da if you want to get that specific with it. It's almost like caffeine and non-caffeine or something. Um, okay. We got hybrids, now, indigas on that nice tray you're talking about. That could be very cool. I don't know what the tendencies of some of the people at the party are. I don't know if they smoke pot or not. Would it be weird just as a, we're going to have a bartender, right? What if we had a a bud tender at the party, a guy that's set up and you go and he's got a little selection of weed. And he, you got a bud tender, I'll change my flight. <laughs> <laughs> forget the reci- forget the recital. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> no, that would be unbelievably cool. I, yeah, I for, think for yeah. you, but for you, but if a non-weed smoker was there and he saw a man. bud tender, would he go? What kind of shit party is this? I don't know, man. I I I think I think maybe uh, depending on the guest, they may go. Oh my god, I'm doing that my next big LA party. I'm stealing that idea. That is fantastic, especially because a bud tender can be ca- rolling joints even when there's no one around. He's just kind of you know cutting ground in some weed, rolling up some dubs. So you know, it's like it's like you've played years ago, uh, Ebor City. And you'd see the guys making the cigars. Right? Yeah, yeah. And they're, just, they're just rolling cigars, whether you buy them or not. They're in there rolling away. That's your bud guy. <laughs> He's just doing that, right? I don't know. It's, that's that's an interesting... I don't know, man. Yeah, I, you I, just want to... That... You don't want to have a half hour in there. He's got like 25 joints rolled. No one's gone near him. And you're like, yeah, you, you shut it down. You go home. No one gives a shit. <laughs> no one gives a shit about the weed. <laughs> Go home. This ain't working. Yeah. Oh god. Um. Okay, so you got the glass pipe. What do you What do you got on the slate over there? What's going on? Any uh, Any Any topics you want to go over? Yeah. I, I, I first of all, I, I want to bring up this right away. I got little small, big, small stuff. But um, Jackie came home the other day with one of these for me, right? Which I dig. Uh, it's one of these little bags. That go around, uh, it, go, it goes wraps around your waist. I go, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't want to be, I go, no shit, a fag bag. I've been thinking about how I would like oh. one of those. It's been a while. And she goes, you can't call it that. I'm sorry, it's fag bag. That's what we used to, that's what I know it as. I don't know it as anything else. And it's the same thing with Indian giver, because I got to talking to Jackie, when you give someone something, then you want it back. You're an Indian giver. So, like, is there a place you can go, a book or a website that can keep you up to date on words that are inappropriate? But, like, because they, they, what do you call this, bro? Uh, outside of your house. What do you call it in your house? In your house. What do you call it in your house? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy. I call that a, I call that a fanny pack. Now. Oh, I've heard that term. I've heard that term. Yeah. I, I'm not saying I, I've never heard your iteration of it, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. But it was always a fanny pack. Now, fanny, I would assume, is a kind of another word for feminine. Because a fanny bag was right, like I, the way we used it growing up. If if, if a guy had that, look, you know, look at this fanny bag he's got on. It wasn't. It wasn't like, oh, that's a nice fanny, bag. right? All right, I think it was. I thought it was like old lady when you say fanny. I'm thinking like maybe an old lady would wear a fanny bag. Like, no, mm, no, it would be like you know, it would be like a purse almost. But you got it wrapped around oh. your waist. 
By the way, oh. <laughs> if we could just show that again, yeah, just bring it up. It's a beauty. She, 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 what do you mean beautiful? I literally said that I was interested in getting these again, one of these again. I go, You're I said that I'm so tired. In the summertime, I wear my shorts. I have so much shit in my pockets, I can't take it. It drives me nuts. So, uh, and she goes, I got you this. And I go, a fag bag, no way, thank you. I apologize. I am not going to use that word again. I did not know we're going with fanny bag. I'm not sure that's much better, but I'll go with fanny bag from now on. Or a merce. It was called it was called a merce, like a man purse. Uh all bro, I, I'm not, not into this. Good. I'm sorry, I'm not into the I'm not into the uh it's a purse, bro. Put it on. No, it's not. I will I'll show you. And listen, man, you gotta you gotta modernize a little bit, dude. No, you I'm know mean, what I, I'm saying. I know. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying it last week you were wearing a, a, a sweatshirt with a strawberry <laughs> on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i like it even more uh, oh yeah. bro well you know, uh, well you know oh what my. So, it don't even look right though it <laughs> it almost looks like you're you're carrying a gun am i wearing it wrong no that's it yeah that yeah it's a shoulder bro it goes over your shoulder it's not a waist uh, strap no it's not we purposely no i don't i don't it's not a shoulder strap guys come on you're being ridiculous let me see yeah it's almost like uh like that like uh like i put my arrows in there like robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> like the, it's not a shoulder strap That's not what it, it is. I it's don't a, know. That, a, that looks. I don't know. It's a merce or whatever you call it. I apologize for what I had been calling it, folks. I really do. And by the way, what's another term when you give some somebody something and then you want it back? Well, yeah. I mean that that was Indian giver that growing up. Right. What is it now though? I can, need can this website up, uh, to go to. Okay. Can you look up what they're using for Indian giver now? <laughs> Thank, thank you for uh, asking them to look that up for me. All right, so uh, but I, I like oh, your I, I like yeah. your idea of having a uh, a source, a website, or a book. Right. Yeah. That explains what these words are now, like what what people are now using for these words. I can't see. Uh, Eleven best words for Indian giver. Uh, renigger. Oh, you, re, you renig. I've used that. Right. But that's only when you say something and take it back, right? Ungifted. It wasn't really a gift. I'm not loving these. I got to be honest with you. I think even Indians didn't mind that term. <laughs> I really do. I feel like they don't even want to see it go away. You know, it was like gave them a little identity. <laughs> Scroll. What's what's right? another one? Uh, yeah, that, that's it. Uh, Repossess. Recaller. Oh, you're a recaller. What the hell is you're that? You're a revoker. You... Yeah, you know what? I think you're right. I think Indian Giver really fits here. <laughs> you know, if it ain't broke, come on. Yeah. All right. Ask anyway. back. You're an ass backer. Fuck that. Get get this off. This, <laughs> this is terrible. So, bro, two things I wanted to run by you. One, I went to my doctor. I want to get into a whole bunch of doctor stuff. Told him about the arm at the end of my visit. And he looks at it and he goes, oh, my gosh, wow, yes, that's exactly what happened. And then he goes, look, and he puts his hand, hand in a certain way and he goes, push my hand, try to push my hand. That's how you can really show how the muscles affected. And I couldn't push his hand. And we mean push his way, hand. Like, what way? What way? Like, like, I forget how he did, but kind of like he made me turn my hand like that and then go like that and push his hand out. And I couldn't really do it. And then when I did it with my rotary that's still together. You know, you can feel the difference. Uh, and then he goes, when did you do it? And I was like, well, I don't know, really. And he goes, you, like, you don't, like, remember a moment? I go, no, I just, you know, I, I remember seeing the dimple. I go, and then I was doing the podcast with my friend Sebastian, and I looked at it, and I noticed the dimple again before we started. And he was like, you got what I got, the detachment of the ligament. Uh, and he goes, oh, wow. He goes, because for most people, there's, usually a really intense shoulder pain 
And I go, oh, yeah, no, I had that. I had a couple of months back, but I just figured I strained my shoulder. And he's like, and you didn't tell anybody? <clears throat> and, bro, that's, see, that's, and I think you got this, too. Our threshold for pain is so high that we don't even bring shit up that other people would, like, literally call an ambulance for. So it just, <laughs> it, it whacks our diagnosis way out of you know check because because i feel like we're doing things that i because in my head i'm like i can't tell my wife every ache and pain i have because it's like the boy who cried wolf i and i had gotten to the point with my shoulder you ever do this wolf where you got to use another part of your body to move a body part like i grabbed my <laughs> other arm to fucking move this arm over in bed where i want it to be <laughs> so so that's so, that report. Yeah. So you got what I got. It's good. I fun. got what you got there. Yeah. And I go, do you do anything about it? And he goes, if you're a pitcher for the New York Mets, you get it reattached. But you know, you don't do anything about it. So do you just um, find it odd that you could just lose these things and it's like, all right, you lost the bicep tendon. You're all yeah. right. Like, yeah. Like, like, uh, what's another thing that, like, oh, your appendix first, we'll take it out. Like, what was it doing there in the first place? Like, the appendix. Know. Apparently, you could live without it. I don't even know what the what the hell is the function of it is. Like, if you I lose know. an appendix, do you piss more or do you like what? What's the <laughs> what is it doing there in the first place that you could just I lose this stuff? Like, we lost half a bicep, and it's like, all right, now what? I mean, like, I don't know, yeah. You could give away a kidney, lose your tonsils. I mean, like, yeah, a lot of I, I equated to I don't know, like an old car. And you go to get in it one time, and the and the passenger door handle comes off, and you're like, eh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> as long as the engine's still running, right? That's the, <laughs> that's it. That's all we got. Now, oh. I gotta ask you something. Same age as me. Uh, not same age as me, same timetable as me. You're obviously three, four years younger, but I had um, I listened to this channel on Sirius XM when I'm working out. Okay, uh, I don't want to get into the channel or anything, but the female uh, disc jockey I listen to every day. I like I like her jib. She says she plays songs I like. I like the thing she says about songs. So one day I'm on the phone with DJ Lou, and I was like, "Can you get me so and so's email?" I just want to tell, send her an email saying I'm really liking what she does. He gets me an email. I email this person. I go, hey, my name is Pete Corielli. I got email through uh, Lou. I used to work over there. I just want to say I listen to you when I work out every day. Love your stories about the bands. Love your music. You turn me on to a lot of stuff. I know uh, you probably don't hear much because you don't take phone calls on, over there. But I just want to let you know, man, really appreciate the great stuff. Uh, she writes back, oh, thanks a lot. Next time you're in city, if you ever want to get lunch. Lunch guy. <laughs> I still got it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> right. You're like me, right? I mean, she basically has to sleep with me. <laughs> Bro, is lunch not, I mean, basically told me to get a room at the Marriott and call her when I get to New York City. <laughs> Now, do you think right. do you think she did a deep dive on you and go, look at this stallion? I think she went to Google Images. That's what she did on me, and then did the lunch offer. So, <laughs> I'm only I'm only kidding. No, no, uh, no. I don't know. Maybe maybe she's like in her head. She's like, guy, lunch is that's what people do now. It's 2023. You get together and you have a little sushi. Uh, I appreciate what you do Appreciate what I do But me and you I'm like I don't know I grew up in the time You asked someone to have lunch It's like you're asking me To have an affair <laughs> Right I, I have lunch with My wife and my mother And my sister That's it That's it Right <laughs> And then If a friend's wife is with me I'll do that too Right So So did you email back? Uh, I Did I email back? <laughs> yeah I just said Um I just said I'm not. Uh, I'm. Gosh, I live so far away. I don't know whenever I'd be back in the city. But um, keep up the great work or something like that. And that's it. You know, 
I like, you know, I didn't really touch on the lunch aspect of it. And I just wanted to let her know that I got her response and that was it, you know, but, and again, I don't know. I live in, uh, and I looked this person up, uh, I, I can't, they're not, I think they're involved. I saw photos because I was like lunch. That's a little, is she good looking? Oh uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But the thing that's crazy about it, when I, when I, I gotta say, when I emailed her, I thought she was like in her 60s or something because I know some of the older disc jockeys over there and I like, um, you know, and they've usually come from FM channels and they would go over there and work part time. So I just thought she was like one of these older, been around disc jockeys, her voice sounded like that and stuff. And I never Googled her or anything. So then when they, she emailed for lunch, I Googled back on the younger side and I was like, oh, Wow, I gotta be careful. I don't wanna be breaking hearts accidentally, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. um, so my question to you is if uh, a woman came up to you, not business wise really, just you know, like someone who's like, you know, if you if you emailed someone and said, Oh man, I admire this painting you did, oh thank you very much. Uh, I admire what you do. If you would ever like to get together for lunch, um, I'd love to have lunch together. Would you be like, oh, yeah, no, it's, it's on. <laughs> right? right? <laughs> yeah, you, 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 can't, like you can't be throwing out like lunch dates right. to a man who was born in the 70s and is Italian. I mean, we. <laughs> <laughs> you take that a certain way. That ain't like a, friend, a friendly thing. That's like <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking. We, we are so. Well, man, that's old school, right? Yeah, that is. I mean, like, if I saw my wife sent out an email to like one of our male neighbors down block and said we should get lunch sometime, you know, when uh, I be, I would literally call my lawyer. I mean, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Be oh, with the god. papers by Friday. So, oh god. All right. Anyway, um, yeah, that's probably a little too heavy well, to get into. Did, this. did I ever yeah. tell you the Jamie Foxx story? Did no. I tell you that? I never told no. you the story. No. Well, uh, Lana, this was this had to be over ten years ago because Lana was in New York City with her mother and her sister. Looking for wedding dresses. All right. She's at a hotel. Lana goes to work out. And in the workout facility is Jamie Foxx. Right? Mm-hmm. And they end up talking. Jamie's talking and whatnot and talking about working out or whatever. And Lana's like, oh, my, you know, my, my boyfriend's a comedian and da 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 We're in town. I'm looking for wedding dresses. And they end up going to dinner. Lana, Lana's mother, I believe Lana's sister was there, and Jamie Foxx, all four of them, they go to dinner together that night. Right? Wow. Now, I'm going, what? What do you mean going to dinner? (laughs) So, like, and Lana, to her credit, is 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 it? You know, it's not like she thought anything about it, right? And, and Lana tends to be on the naive side, right? Right. Okay. But me hearing this again, Italian nineteen seventies, I'm thinking, all right, this guy's going out. He's gonna whole make the whole family laugh. And go for a round, da, 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 and then there's gonna be a side yeah. thing. Hey, you know, why don't we go for a drink? Now, I'm just saying, right, right. as a man, I'm thinking this is this is the the plan, right? And right. Lana's like, no, oh, we're just going out for shoot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> so, in that sense, do you think? Like, give me a take. If that was Jackie and her family, and you know, major right. movie star, Oscar winner, they go out to dinner right. with them. Is that just yeah. a di- 
I don't know, but me, I wouldn't go out to dinner right. with three strangers that I've just met in fucking uh, gym. Right. No. I. What, what, what are we asking here? I mean, uh, Jamie Foxx, obviously, was like interested. Don't it's you gotta think? be right now. How? Right. I mean, there's no other way to think of it. Now, I could totally see, like, uh, someone's wife, my wife, you know, Lana, going. Don't matter what he thought. I know what I thought. So I was not yeah. that. Yeah. So we, so we were just like, hey, let's go out and have dinner with yeah. Jamie Fox, and that's fine. And I believe that and know that, and I'm not worried. That don't change the fact that the, 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 the dinner shouldn't be going down, right? Is that like? Well, but that's so old school by us, bro. Well, you is, can't think that way. It's terrible. Let's say, let's say you and uh, you're in the gym, right? Right. And you're with yeah. your mother and your sister in New York City. And you, and you run into Reese Reese Witherspoon. Can't do it, guy. No and she way, goes, bro. What? And she wants no. to have dinner with me. And your mother and sister. And your mother and your sister. Do you go? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, uh, you got to put it this way. I'm not say I'm not even in the business, right? Because like, I mean, you know, it's like maybe you could somehow call like entertainment. Uh, like business dinner. Oh, in the oh sense okay. That... Like, like, let's say it's a. a I'm a, a lawyer. Very... Well, no, let's say it's um, a very attractive politician. So we're, we're not even in an entertainment business, but in another right, industry, could probably, could probably pull that off too. Same we were talking politics. If it's like, if Jackie see, found you're... out you went out with Reese Witherspoon. For the and lunch for no reason, not a project. For dinner, to talk for about. sushi dinner with your mother. And no project. That's weird. That she'd say that's weird. Yeah. 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 See, that's why my my thing is smart. All the women I like and I talk about, they're like 70. Stevie Nicks. Julia Roberts is up there. Uh love me a little share, a little Martha Stewart. You 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 bring up like, oh God, I love Stevie Nicks. I could eat dinner with Stevie Nicks ten, five days a week, save my jacket. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Reese Witherspoon, she's still, you know, she's got a lot going on, if you know what I'm saying. She's still <laughs> young and ready. So so you gotta keep those old, dude. Old, you got no problem. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh shit. So anyway, yeah, how did that play out as far as, uh, you know? Well, you know, then I was like, I was like, yeah, this is not, you know, she's like, well, no, maybe he could help you do, you know, like maybe he could help and, st and stand it. Because I was, at this point, right. this, this had to be over, shit, maybe even 12 years ago. You know, maybe he could help you with comedy. I go, I don't need his help. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the way that was going, all he's going to end up, Giving me is a good bit about how I almost got married, and then my wife ran into Jamie Fox <laughs> shopping for a dress. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a oh, funny story, though. I can see Lana doing that for you. After that, right? And to this day, right? We'll be watching TV, and then Jamie Fox will come on a commercial. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like. We'll be driving. Jamie Foxx will be on a billboard, right? Or we'll, we'll yeah. flip it to a magazine. There he is. Like, it's almost like when you think you got cancer, you start seeing cancer all over the place. You know, like, that's yeah, what it was yeah. with Jamie Foxx. We, we, I've been seeing this guy now for 12 years going, hey, get in, so, get this guy. So, like, if Lana hypothetically is in a dentist's office looking at a People magazine, there's Jamie Foxx doing flips off a yacht in St. Tropez. Does she think... She could be on that yacht right there. <laughs> Say Tropez. <laughs> right, bro? We got a reader. I read my People magazine photos. Oh. They don't even know. Oh, what, San Tropez. San Tropez. Tropez. Oh, oh, that's not how you say it? <laughs> San Tropez? Shit. Say Tropez. That's oh, how it wow. reads on the thing. No. Oh, By the way, before we end the show, did you happen to hear those clips of you in Italian and Spanish? Oh yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Did, did we? Got... Oh, can we play those really quick, dude? The, the, it sounds like I had my daughter <laughs> listen to yours, 
And I go, who does this sound like? And at times she goes, oh, that's Mr. Sebastian. It's unbelievable, do, dude. Do we have those readily available? Okay, yeah, so what what had happened is Patrick put together, I don't know how the hell he did it. He has put together a sampling of Pete and I speaking Italian. Um, and Spanish. And, and Spanish. Uh, but are we speaking, what are we even saying? Well, there's a, the, first we have the an podcast. In, no, he's got. I took this, the, the text of George Carlin's seven words bit. Okay. The seven words you can't say on TV and pasted that text into the AI that I trained with your voices off the podcast and then uh, printed the English version. And then I ran the same text through a translator app, pasted the translated text back into the AI, and then it performed as you uh, speaking Italian, speaking Spanish. Okay. Yeah, like so he took the calling thing to get a bunch of words by us in 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 American. Yeah. And then this freaking AI interprets it and then tries to keep it in your cadence. And I, I'm trying to get ahead of the game, bro. I'm trying to get it so we can do entire shows and then have Patrick put it in all these languages. Like I want us to be number one in Iran. I want people to be <laughs> sipping a, a Turkish coffee. In Iran, just listening to us in Iranian, bro. In Iranian, <laughs> like it's, Patrick, can it's we Persian? Can we... It's Persian. But... <laughs> That's oh my the god, bro! What do you Google today? <laughs> Holy shit, you're all over me, bro. No, I mean, geez. the Saint Tropez, you speak, you speak the Iranian. Oh I mean, god. you sound like you summertime, sound like... bro. School's over. School's over. What? <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a dock worker. Oh. <laughs> this guy spoke Iranian. All right. I do. I do sound like a doc worker. I'm aware of that. It's called uh, Sunni Sunni education, right? <laughs> Sunni for Uh All right. Do we, do we do we have it? Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, which one would you like to hear first? All right. Let's let's hear Pete in Italian. Okay. Here we okay. are. Here Pete. is Pete in a Pete okay. in Italian. Ti ringrazio per aver ascoltato le mie parole. Voglio dirti qualcosa sulle parole che ritengo importante. Sono il mio lavoro, sono il mio gioco, sono la mia passione. Le parole sono tutto ciò che abbiamo, davvero. Abbiamo pensieri, ma i pensieri sono fluidi, sai, tipo wu 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 pop. Poi assegniamo una parola a un pensiero e siamo bloccati con quella parola per Pause that. Now, now, there's moments there, I hear you. Yeah. Okay, it's not, it's not... If somebody well, pl- if somebody played that if you played that for your sister do you think she'd be able to distinguish that's you uh yes my spanish if we can play that in a second and just for like 10 seconds but my spanish sounds even more like me yours sounds exactly like you however right, go go, go yeah. pete go pete spanish right above let me it. play the uh let me play the english just to register it as what pete could kind of sound like right. play a couple seconds of that and then I'll hit the Spanish. Bad words. That's what they told us they were, remember? That's a bad word. No bad words, bad thoughts, bad intentions, and words. You know the seven, don't you? That you can't say on television. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, right. and tit. What is that? Is that me? Is yeah. that me? That's you yeah. in English. The basic English. <laughs> but, but that's just taking me saying those words and putting them together. Like, I didn't read that or say that. Correct. No. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then here's uh, Spanish. Amo las palabras. Te agradezco por escuchar mis palabras. Quiero contarte algo sobre las palabras que creo nah. que es importante. That's even less. Son I mi guess trabajo, the son mi juego, son one. mi pasión. Las palabras son todo lo que tenemos en realidad. I think Sebastian's nah. might have turned out a little, a little better in the, the Way Italian. Way better. Yeah. Okay. Go, go, go my in Italian. I want to hear that again. Amo le parole. Ti ringrazio per aver ascoltato le mie parole. Voglio dirti qualcosa sulle parole che ritengo importante. Sono il mio lavoro, sono il mio gioco, sono la mia passione. Le parole sono tutto ciò che abbiamo, davvero. Abbiamo pensieri, ma i pensieri sono fluidi, sai, tipo wu 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 pa. Wow. Poi assegniamo una parola a un pensiero e siamo bloccati wow. con quella parola per quel pensiero. Quindi fai attenzione alle parole. Mi piace pensare che wow. sì, le stesse parole che fanno... <ride> I mean, Holy shit. Wow, bro. 
Your your voice is is supposed to be spoken in Italian. If if you lived in Italy and spoke like that, you 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 could be the Rush Limbaugh of Italy, bro. <laughs> That's beautiful. Doesn't that sound beautiful, bro? I heard that and I wanted to immediately start taking classes. I Can know. you imagine just breaking out into that? <sighs> just, I, I, bro, I would be doing that in America. I'd be speaking Italian when I oh. went to a, a a restaurant, and and the God. the guy would go, "I'm sorry, I don't understand Italian," and then I go, "Oh, I'm sorry," and I'd start speaking huh. English. I would just show off with it. <laughs> I love it. You're gonna. Become- I would use it also to yell at somebody that got problem. I love it. Damn it. Damn it. Oh, man. But listen how you sound. You sound like important and shit, bro. We got it. I know this is just touching the surface of this technology, yeah. but we got to be ahead of the game, Patrick. I don't know. I mean, I don't can, know. Can we take an we entire do. podcast and translate it into a different language? Yeah, we're working on a, we're doing a case study right now. Uh, we're taking a three minute clip that has, you know, an actual back and forth between the two of you. Yeah. And we're just measuring the the workflow process of, you know, what does it take to do three minutes? And then just a multiple of that would be the hour. And uh, the the frustrating part about all this AI stuff is that, you know, we could spend, you know, a couple of weeks trying to figure out the proper workflow to make it sound right doing it this way and then one week after that a new tool can be revealed that has sped everything up so we're gonna we're working on that that test just to see if we can get the quality there and then we'll accept any helpful tools after that too yeah now listen i got i gotta be transparent here with not only Uh patrick but you and and uh, patrick you gotta be honest with me here as he whipped, he, he put that shit up on the screen. And in the background, I saw Whitney words. Now, is this, is this, is this, is this, look, look at, <laughs> is this being done with Whitney Cummings as well? And if so, we need to be the first one to debut this. You guys, you're in, you're in a race. You're in a race with Whitney now. <laughs> That's funny because I could swear it was my idea. Did we really have the same idea? <laughs> guy, guy's, guy's on literally on the end of the fucking plank and, on, and he's laughing. <laughs> that's, what, that's what he's doing right now. He's giggling on the end of the plank. Bro, this was my this was my idea, right? Did she have the idea too? I need to hit off my glass. <laughs> Get the glass out. <laughs> Get the fucking no, been, glass out. I've been working on <laughs> no. a, I've, I've been working on a, a 3D model, a uh, realistic looking 3D model of Whitney for a few months. But the uh, the voice training, the system that I'm using to train the, the voice of you guys, uh, I've been running the two of you. I've been running Whitney through that. And uh, but yeah, just whoever wants to do a project first, really. That was a real politician answer right there bro <laughs> no really it's been three months um and both of you guys are really doing the same thing um, i think i think this was my idea <laughs> you took a, you never take a sip when you take a sip of liquid bro sebastian that means like you're getting a little hotter than a call yourself <laughs> <laughs> Patrick is answering. All of a sudden, I see well, this big I... yellow can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, so... started, we started talking about this in at the beginning of June, which was a few days after I made these. I made these all on the same night. See, these are all I, from the I know, 29th. I, I, these are all from all like, right. uh, here, I'll show you this. Show all you right, you didn't start good. making them, though, the <laughs> night I told you about it. I told no. you about it. I made these before we talked about it. I sent these over to you guys on a text, and then we started really getting into it. Oh. This was on the on May 29th, and it's, these were all, yeah, all right. the same night. And I did you uh, guys honest, here before yeah. I did Whitney up here. So well, I did them all. You know, that, but, so. but seriously, though, out. like, um, but seriously, though, like uh, Patrick was saying, dude, you know, AI, like, educates itself. So, like, 
within two weeks, AI could figure out how to make it be seamless that we're in any language. Well, that's what I'm and, saying. And two it's weeks like, after that, it's going to murder us, but there'll be a two week window where uh, it'll be able to do this. Yeah, uh, I, I think as technology definitely advances that we could compare what we just heard say in another six to eight months and it'd be like wow look at the difference right so it's like do you right. you know if you put that out now people would go all right this is like two guys just huh. translating right and, and but there's no inflection and right and the, and you, the know, you know what i'm but, saying but the bottom line bro within about a year <clears throat> you'll probably be able to put this in anything farsi right and then and then the entire world becomes your possible audience, right? Yeah. And then someday someone's going to have literally like 700 million subscribers. Man, why not us? Yeah. Pretty cool. Let's get You're this gonna, thing in Chi yeah, we'll, we'll, Chinese. We're going to miss you. That's it. That's it. In Chinese. I, dude, we could personal. Imagine we like, like made Chinese American relations better. <laughs> Whatever. Through the cast. So Patrick, right, good luck with with Whitney moving forward. <laughs> You'll be missed. <laughs> well, I don't think we're going to do down. her podcast because she has a guy, guest. I don't time. even think you're doing the second show with us today. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be able to train her because she has a different guest every week. It wouldn't really make sense to do it fresh for a new voice every single week. It'd be a lot. But it makes. No I'm only. Sense I'm only kidding. Yeah. I know. I know. So many people are thinking about this. I was just kidding with you. But uh, yeah, yeah. seriously, good hang. But good we hang. are doing a sample. We'll do. We're doing a sample that we'll, we're actually going to release it on uh, YouTube as a clip. I'm gonna. I'm gonna marry that audio back to the video, and it'll have like that kung fu movie dub look to it. Cool. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you for uh, listening. Uh, the uh, Pete and Sebastian show again. Patreon. Pete and Sebastian show on Patreon. The next yes. show. The next show we do, I have a list of things that we're going to do or we should do in Fort Lauderdale. Lindsay came up oh, with 10 right. things that we activities that we 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 could do together and get some content. And I want to see what activities that you want to do based on her compilation. That's next next week on the Pete and Sebastian show.